Hi guys, and welcome to the Mazama Flip Biology. Um, I'm Miss Nickerson, and Mr. Rapper is out uh, finishing his elk hunt. And we wanted to introduce you to the metric system. I want to remind you: pause now if you need to, and go and get your notes so that you can take your notes as you're watching uh, our assignment today. Today we're talking about measurement, and you have to have a standard if you're going to measure things. If you have two people who are trying to do business and I want to sell you something and I measure differently than you, you're not going to be very happy if you're overcharged. So a standard is an exact quantity that people use for comparison. Most of the time that's important for when you're selling things or bartering for things. And that's where it came about. <clears throat> so uh, we should get the same results if we're using the same standard. Where did standards come from? Well, in the past, um, people used to use their body lengths. So whoever was in charge got to decide the body length. Usually that meant the king. So each time there was a new king, that meant there was a new set of standards. Um, they used to use the king's hand, or how long was the king's foot, or his stride, or his favorite horse. It, it changed all the time. Well, that's okay, but it made it difficult to um, conduct trade, especially if your king was different than somebody else's king in a different country. And there was a lot of arguing over what was the standard. So um, using the king's anatomy or whoever's in charge of anatomy did not work for, for very long. So we had to come up with something different. Um, they used their feet for distance, which worked pretty good, but my foot's a lot different size than your foot, and so that's not going to work for everything. Um, and that's how the term a foot came about. So when you're thinking of the system that we use today, which in the United States is the yardstick and has three feet, this is where we came up with foot, was an average person's foot. Um, now, you should know that 12 inches is one foot. I think you guys pretty much know that 12 inches equals a foot. Um, but you may not know all the other confirmants. Uh, English system units and that's because it's really confusing just tonight I was cooking dinner and I didn't have enough milk so here's my measuring stuff at home I didn't have enough milk for a cup of milk for the muffins I was making for breakfast and so I was trying to figure out if I only had three cups of three quarters cup of milk how much of the other stuff that I would have to uh, put in so that my recipe would still work and I actually had to do a lot of math to make this work if I was using the metric system it would have been a lot easier um, so looking at the table here you can see you know you've got inches feet yards miles um, ounces pounds grams cups pints quarts gallons I'm from America and I'm a science teacher and I still don't know all of these by heart so it gets really confusing did you know that the United States is the only country that still uses the English system? Um, everyone else in the world has switched over to metric, and I really do think that it's only a matter of time before the United States does too. However, it will be very expensive. We'll have to change all those miles per hour signs. We'll have to start teaching it better in school. But um, I think if you give up on what you know and really take an honest look at the metric system, it is crazy easier. So, why do scientists give the English system the thumbs down? Well, because we want a uniform system of measurements. If everyone else in the world is measuring with a metric system, how are we supposed to measure with the English system? It's not going to work very good. How exactly did the metric system come about? Well, when we came up with the standard unit, uh, we were able in the 18th century to figure out what the circumference of the Earth is based upon the angle that the Earth's horizon uh, went down. And so we could take that circumference and we could divide that distance by 10 million parts. And that's what one meter is. Now this was done long before we went to space or could see the Earth um, from you know a different distance. And so yes, there are some ups and downs and mountains and stuff that affect this, but they made this measurement based upon if the Earth was a perfect circle. So it's just a little bit of math. They cast this meter stick in metal, and they made thousands of copies and sent them all over Europe. The original standard of meter is still kept in France as kind of like a relic. Um, it's a replica of the standard. But now that people had something that they could conduct trade with, this made everything so much easier. There's no more arguing about how much something was or you uh, gypped me on the price here. Everybody agreed because you had a standard. Now, a meter stick is made up of 100 centimeters. Now, this is not a full meter stick, but we can see, hopefully we know that um, these are centimeters right here. The little tiny numbers that we see on rulers. Now, lots of times this is confusing. 
because well, what that's about um, because it often says millimeters on the sticks well, that's because each tiny little slash is a millimeter but the numbers actually represent centimeters and there are uh, 100 centimeters in a meter and a thousand millimeters in a meter <clears throat> so how did the liter itself come about now meters are what measure distance but not everything in measurement is about distance we also have volume and liter is a measurement of volume we had to find a way to make sure that we had a standard for volume as well so they took 10 centimeters so here's 10 centimeters right here and they made a box basically that was 10 by 10 by 10 and the amount of space that the liquid filled inside that box we called a liter so you could say that a 10 centimeter cubic box or 10 centimeters cubed is equal to one liter and that's how we have our standard for volume um, there you go liter is the size of 10 centimeters cubed <clears throat> 10 times 10 times 10 times. <laughs> That's what gives us volume. So if I ask you to calculate the, something, the volume of something in class, I'm asking you to take the length times the width times the height. And for standard metric units, that's a liter. All right. So let's now take a look at mass. Mass is how much of something there is. Um, weight is a little bit different. That's how much your something is affected by gravity. We kind of think of them the same thing in the United States, but mass is a just it's a little bit different. So, scientists type decided to take one cubic centimeter, that's the little one right here, little tiny cube, and they said if we fill that with water, the amount of water that's in there, we're going to call that a gram. So you could also say that one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, one cubic centimeter, is equal to a gram. Now, time, that's pretty simple. The whole world uses seconds, minutes, and hours. And if you didn't know it, it was Galileo that came up with the seconds, just so you know. Now, why should we switch over to the metric system in the United States? Well, it was not that long ago that NASA, some of the smartest people around, were using uh, measurements to try to get a probe to send it all the way to Mars and land it. Here's the problem. They had two different teams working on this. They had scientists and they had engineers. Well, the engineers were doing their calculations in English standard units, like feet, miles, yards, and so forth. Well, the scientists were doing their calculations in the metric system, meters, liters, and grams. They didn't realize that the other team was uh, doing it in the opposite system, and we had a serious mistake. Okay. Anytime people have mistakes, uh, people get angry. But not only did this make everybody angry, this cost the American taxpayers $125 million. The probe that they sent crashed. It burned on entry. And they had no idea that they had had this mistake until after the crash had happened. This is like a four-year project. So I don't know, it's just another reason that America needs to probably get on board and get with the metric system. It's not as hard as you think. So how does the metric system work? Well, you guys have seen this before. The metric system has three standard units. Let me get to them right here. <clears throat> Meters, liters, and grams. Distance, volume, and mass. And each of those is represented by one. Well, if you want take one and multiply it by ten, you get ten, and we call that deca. Multiply that by ten, you get a hundred, we call that heco. And one more time, multiply it by ten, and we get kilo. So by increasing by tens, we make the math really easy. Everybody can multiply a number by ten. Five times ten, fifty. Done. Okay. Uh, Twelve inches times uh, fifty. Oh, well, that's a little bit different. All right. Now we can make things get bigger. So we've got kilo bigger, but we also have to have things scaled smaller as well. So deci is one tenth, centi is one one hundredth, and milli is one one thousandth. Now, you should know, it doesn't stop at these. It keeps on going. For example, um, giga is um, one one millionth. So it's not like these are the only parts of the metric system. These are just the ones that we focus on because they're the closest to our standard metric units of one. So these are increasing in size and decreasing in size. These here uh, are called prefixes. And you can combine any of the prefixes with any of the standard metric units to change their value. So you guys have heard of centimeters before. Ah, that's driving me nuts. Centimeters before uh, or kiloliters. Well, there's just combinations of prefixes and standard metric units. 
so that we can put a range on our unit. All right, so let's take a look at how to use the metric chart. Anytime you have a problem that's a metric system, rewrite it and make sure you write down the decimal. If there's no decimal, put a decimal at the end. It's the same thing. You haven't changed the value. Put your pencil where you start, and then you're going to move your pencil the direction of the conversion. <clears throat> so here's how it works. Let's say you need 100 centimeters to, is how many meters? Well, we lay out our system from largest to smallest. Now, I like to make up a sentence to help me remember this, but we'll get to that later. So, I am going from centimeters, which is right here, to meters. Meters is a standard metric unit. That means I have to go one, two, to the left. I'm getting bigger. Well, there's no decimal here, so I'm going to pretend that there's one right here. I'm going to move it one, two to the left, and drop it off. My 100 centimeters is equal to one, two, one meter. What about this one? 6.9 millimeters is how many centimeters? Well, I'm going from milli to centi. That means I'm starting here and moving one again to the left. Let's take my decimal and move it one to the left. That means 6.9 millimeters is the exact same distance as 0.69 centimeters. You can do this with any standard metric unit, meters, liters, or grams. The one thing I want you to be careful about is deca and deci are really similar, so make sure you know which one you're going to there. And then also, if it says um, starting at meters, make sure you start at the standard metric unit. And you're not over here with milli. A lot of people get confused with that as well. Now, how are you going to remember this? Some of you already have it memorized, but if you're like me, you need a trick. So I always make up something called a mnemonic device. It's where you take the letter of something you want to remember, like kilo, hecto, deca, and replace it with a word that you can remember. This is actually a true story. I was dating a guy in high school named Kelly Hall. I went to their house for dinner and watched his dad chew a steak that he never swallowed in his mouth. So this is my sentence from high school, my mnemonic device. Kelly Hall's dad, Sam, doesn't chew meat. You should kind of think of your own mnemonic device to help you with this. Then you can write down your sentence, write below it the actual prefixes, Kilo hectodeca, standard metric unit, deci centi milli, and then you can use it to bounce around and do all of your conversions. We're going to practice conversions in class, and we're also going to practice measuring <laughs> lots of different things in class for mass, distance, and volume. Thank you for joining us on the BioFlip and the Viking Science Academy. We'll see you in class.